Hey all here, OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at one of the cheapest smartphones that I found on Taobao.com. This is a site that is comparable to Amazon or eBay, but uh, it's in China. They have now expanded onto kind of a global platform where you can buy things and they will ship to the US as well, but uh, at very low prices because many of these are directly from factories. So this is a phone that's new that I found for 200 RMB, which converts to the conversion rate is roughly seven right now, so about 28 bucks. So the packaging here is um, very simple. It just has a few different colors printed on it, and there's no mentions of any companies or any specs at all, so quite generic. We have the phone on top there, and underneath it looks like we have uh, two battery holders. It's sealed in this very interesting wrapper. Uh, it says it's a 3,800 milliamp hour capacity. So Taobao is technically a sub-company of Alibaba, founded by Jack Ma, and he's, of course, a very successful businessman by now. So let's peel this off, and the is issue, at least, with um, Taobao is that even though pricing for their devices seems to be cheaper than what you'll find on eBay, uh, even for a super low-cost phone, is that there are many fakes and counterfeits, and uh, there are less kind of regulations and law, of course, within China that regulates the selling of fake commercial goods. So buying things there is definitely more of a gamble and a risk without as much kind of warranty backing it up. There is a plate here which is removable. It's not unibody, it's made out of plastic. And in here it says 4G China Mobile supports what looks like a dual SIM and a micro SD card. Okay, so from a design perspective, the phone doesn't look that bad. It uh, seems like a device from maybe from 2017 bezels are pretty large, but again, this is a really low-cost phone, and it would fit right on in with 2017 or 2016. Comparing it with a Google Pixel uh, 1 over here, you can tell that the screen is a little larger. It's about 5.2 inches diagonally. It's a regular LCD panel. I believe the resolution is only 800 by 480, so that is extremely low, not even HD. There's a front-facing camera, which is probably only VGA. There's a earpiece, and down below here, what looks like a fingerprint scanner is only a home key. And we saw on the sticker here that uh, there looks like uh, capacitive controls on the chin here, which we can tap to access back and multitasking. Uh, on the top, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, micro USB. The phone is super plasticky here, but uh, is heavier than you'd think. So the battery is actually quite heavy. So not sure why you have antenna bands when the entire thing is plastic, just for, I guess, a fake design or a fake look. But it says it's designed by F dot space ID in Hoot. So whatever that means. So now it's turning on for the first time, and let's uh, find out you know, how it operates. Uh, it, it's claimed to be running on, I believe, Android uh, 6.0 Marshmallow. And the lock screen here does look actually pretty stock. But uh, after we get inside, it looks uh, definitely like a heavily customized launcher that is trying to imitate iOS, but not doing a great job. And let's try jumping into settings over here. Definitely a bit of choppiness there, and a very different layout than standard Android. It almost makes me question if this is running on Android at all at this point, or if it's just a Java-based UI. And we have just uh, Wi-Fi management, my device, we have personal information and more. That's kind of a weird way of dividing things. About phone, it says that it's running on Android 5.1.1, so it should be running on Android Lollipop. Let's tap on this for a few times. And it says play Lollipop Land, so that's definitely not what we're supposed to be seeing. Uh, if you tap on this, it's still giving us this uh, inspired, um, you know, Flappy Bird inspired kind of layout, but it seems like it's a regular game. It even tells you your high score, which a regular lollipop definitely does not do. And I can tap on this. It doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe to save your score online. So it seems like this is just a fake um, launcher or a fake kind of splash screen that's trying to imitate uh, lollipop. So I'm not even sure if this is running on Android, or if it is, it's probably an even lower version of Android than 5. And using a bit more, it's getting choppier and kind of laggier as I'm using it. We can access what looks like multitasking here, and we have a whopping 300 megabytes of RAM. So uh, I believe on the specs it said that this had either one or two gigabytes of RAM. That seems to be um, not accurate either. So again, there are quite a few kind of warning signs popping up now. It seems like a lot of the software in terms of the settings has been tweaked. 
uh, by the seller. Okay, so there's no app tray on the bottom, so I can't tap on that to take a look list of uh, all my applications. So we just have these screens with the apps. Again, very similar to iOS. Quite a bit of bloatware installed as well. An accelerometer, yes there is, it's just very slow. And the screen, as we can see here, does not look good at all. It's not an IPS panel, it's just a regular LCD, which, again, just feels like a throwback to many years ago. So if you tilt it at the wrong angle, it kind of blacks out on you. A calendar app, which by default says that we are in January 2012, so maybe this was a phone that was first released in 2012, but now it's been repackaged for 2018. Um, again, another kind of warning sign there. There's FM radio, but you need a headphone plugged in to act as the antenna. And there's a flashlight uh, widget, I think, that uses the LED flash, and that seems to work all right. And we also have what, what's called e-reader. Quite a bit of lag here as well, as we can tell. This is a, what looks like a menu screen, and it loads up some audiobooks or maybe comic books. I'm not too sure. Everything here is in Chinese. Tapping on a book, it does actually open up, and I can scroll through, and uh, this actually does work. I can tap on it once maybe to take a look at uh, some notes and whatnot. So this is an ebook reading app. Some parts in English, some parts in Chinese, which is uh, a little confusing there. Wallpapers that you have, there are quite a few, it seems like. Desktop, so there are a few kind of animations here that are clearly inspired by, inspired by Apple. This one by HTC, this one by Samsung. So again, a lot of um, ripping off of uh, other manufacturers. Taking a look at the camera here, and it is super zoomed in. It seems like we are standing this close to the subject, even though we are actually about a feet away right now. So that is definitely the sign of a subpar camera there, not very wide angle. And capturing a shot takes literally a second, has kind of an obnoxious sound there. Interface looks okay, I'd say you can access supposedly an HDR mode, not sure how effective that is, what's supposed to be panorama on the side there, which is a little funny. Uh, swiping back, again a lot of jumpiness and choppiness, you can change some of the other kind of profiles, ISO. Unfortunately the camera has now crashed for whatever reason, if we try and relaunch it, maybe it will work. Let's take a look at some of these other shots here of fruit. So again, a lot of um, overexposing. Not a great camera, reminds me of something maybe from 2008. One of the last things to do is take a look at the browser and whether it's usable at all. Let's try typing out YouTube. Quite a bit of lag on the keyboard here. And no, that was not successful. Not sure if simply because the browser here is blocking certain sites like YouTube, since it's owned by Google, or if it's just you know, not enough memory to even load this page. So overall web browsing is probably not something that you would want to do too much on this device. And it's just creating lots of new um, app shortcuts, which are already here. So I'm not really sure what's happening either. Just overall very, very strange. So that's kind of the look at this phone. Uh, I'm, I don't know if this is going to be the worst phone of 2018, but it definitely comes very close. Because even for $30, I think you can do better as a pre finding a prepaid option. In fact, we've covered many $10, $20 phones in the past uh, few months, especially if you're willing to take a look at slightly older devices that are definitely leaps and bounds above this. It just proves if you're looking at an absolute entry-level device, then a new phone might not even be as good as a slightly older one. It definitely feels like more of a you know clone of something. It feels like maybe it's an iOS clone of the software, but on design it seems like a Oppo clone. Just not really sure what's going on, but ultimately it was unsuccessful in both the hardware and the software. You can learn more details in the description box below, as well as uh, some products that we would definitely recommend over this one if you do want to buy a really low-cost phone. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.